All right. Get this thing going. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining today. Uh, and good morning. Uh, welcome to the VMware Digital Workspace Workshop. Today, we'll be dis we will be discussing all things that you guys have been missing in the world of endpoint management and how companies can find the perfect mix of security and employee productivity. We live in a world where 95% of breaches originate at endpoints. It's one where many legacy systems and on-prem tools are still being used as well in these places. That's why alongside me today, I have Eric Woodland. Eric is a systems and endpoint engineer with over two decades of experience in the design, implementation, and administration of enterprise IT systems. He's an expert when it comes to all things cloud computing. Eric, welcome and thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Max. Appreciate it. Of course. If anyone has questions for Eric or I today, please leave them in the chat. Uh, we can get them answered live right away. Uh, but if we don't make it to your question, we'll make sure they are, all, they are all answered at the end of the presentation. So a quick question, who is EBF? Why are we here? What are we doing? EBF, we're the fastest growing IT service provider and consultant when it comes to anything mobile device management systems. We've been doing this for coming up on 28 years, uh, starting way back when people first began using Blackberries in the enterprise space. And now, you know, we specialize in making uh, the litany of devices you may have work as one in conjunction, being in and out of the workplace. So Eric, tell us a little bit about the, the landscape of endpoint security in the workforce. You know, how have things changed in recent years? What's going on? Yeah, so as we know, uh, things are changing uh, day by day. <laughs> Uh, over the past couple of years, especially. Um, so as, as we know, we, we've, we've shifted in the past two or three years, right? And, uh, and people are working from anywhere. People are working from all different regions. People are working in different time zones. Um, so now we went from having a company that had maybe one, one spot on the map to many, uh, or you have mergers and acquisitions. Or you have things like that uh, coming up where, where you have more folks working with you from across the globe. Um, so that said, that, that means we have more services we need to provide. Uh, we have more regions that we are servicing. Um, we have different types of customers that are out there connecting to these apps and services. And uh, we have, you know, folks as well that are, uh, are now subject to, to different types of guidance uh, in terms of GDPR and things like that, where information uh, needs to be tracked and, and communicated and, um, you know, the, the end user being uh, able to understand where it is that their data is being housed. So um, lots of complexities that have come along uh, with that, you know, and again, you know, push come to show with pandemics and, and high, you know, high speed internets and, you know, just all the things that, that we have now that are enabling us to do this uh, are requiring systems that are, um, are able to deal with that. So now we start to look at where we are today and how we get to a system, you know, that, that can handle something like that, where we have uh, employees in the different regions and time zones and different types of devices. Uh, we, you know, we're at this point where um, siloed management tools are a thing, and they, um, you know, it's, a, it's a reality. Right? A lot of us have things that we've acquired and purchased and, and would like to hold on to, and uh, they may do one thing well. Um, but when we start to consider all the components that, that we are dealing with on a day, day basis and, you know, our applications, the uh, web-based apps, the mobile apps, we might have VMs, uh, we may have Windows applications that are being pushed out and, and still people using, you know, just, just ordinary uh, vanilla web apps. And then we start to look at uh, those being pushed out, you know, for a subset of devices from one system. So if we have mobile devices that are out there, um, and of course we have our traditional Microsoft endpoints uh, that are dealing with, with all the, the imaging that goes along with those and app delivery and patching and things like that. And then we start to look at, you know, the far right here, which is, you know, more of our Mac OS, Chrome OS, um, and custom uh, flavors of, of, you know, desktops and operating systems, I should say endpoints that are out there. And so it, uh, it makes us, you know, look at all these systems that we may have, that we have individual resources managing, um, and that kind of makes us look at it from, from something like this, as we see in the next slide. Okay, so we have fragmentation, right? And we have 
you know, that looking at that and how that applies to all these systems that are out there. And that starts to drive cost, right? Um, it was great that we you know, uh, received a system uh, to manage a certain type of device as part of a deal. Um, but that's, you know, potentially at some point going to become, you know, legacy and siloed in its own. And we need to start looking at how we can absorb that into uh, a bigger system that is uh, able to, to do more from a single pane of glass. Um, we have, of course, th with those systems, we have threats that are out there. And so we have to patch the systems that are managing systems to keep them up to date. Um, and then, of course, we need to patch the endpoints as well. Um, but when you look at all of this, you think about your end user and the uh, potential for, you know, uh, you to, to miss uh, the target, you know, with, with the, the experience that you're looking to deliver, right? Because you have different types of devices managed by different systems and you, there's just lots of variance there uh, between all those. So that said, go ahead and look at our next slide here. So to provide visibility into where we are today and you know all the types of devices that we are you know potentially managing in 2022 all right we went from a very like max alluded to in, in, the, in, the, in the beginning you know back in the blackberry days we had a monochrome screen um with brick builder and uh you know just just a couple things like email and calendars and whatnot um and so now of course we've gone to where we have uh phones, phablets, tablets, desktops, um, rugged IT, scanners, uh, IoT, you know, and then on top of all that, we have all the different types of, of platforms as well. So um, running with, you know, your Apple flavors and Android and um, its, it's, it's partner or cousin, we should say, Chrome OS and Linux. Like I said, there's, just, there's a lot going on um, that's out there that we have to be considerate of now. So, hey, Eric, quick, quick question mm -hmm. on this. I mean, you know, you, you talk about, you know, eliminating IT silos, right? You know, everyone always talks about eliminating silos, you know, making sure that they have, you know, one pane of glass. You know, sometimes when you eliminate silos, eventually you can become a silo yourself. Uh, how does, you know, VMware make sure that they don't become a silo themselves? Yeah, so VMware has always prided themselves in, in being a front runner, um, you know, back from when before they were VMware, when they were AirWatch, and they were looking for a way to, uh, you know, to carve out uh, their offerings in, in that space. Um, so they've taken a lot of time and effort uh, to incorporate things into their different offerings for platforms that kind of push them forward, and that's how they ended up in this position that they are today. Um, case in point, you know, it, it's a lot of folks will manage, you know, uh, MDM, right? They'll, they'll push out the basics that are provided to them by Apple and, and Google uh, and Microsoft. Um, but, you know, when you get into the, the bigger management, right, when you're looking at it, full-blown uh, desktops and endpoints that require um, having a, a client that can actually deploy things and, and execute scripts, um, that's that's where they really took the time and the effort to to in, incorporate those types of things, and, and it shows, right? They um, they just they have a fully comprehensive um, offering, and like I say, they've always been great at keeping up and you know getting into Chrome OS, right? Chrome OS, uh, they were one of the first to incorporate support for that, and you know those are taken off at a rapid pace in schools because of cost. You can acquire them; they're easy to operate. Uh, they're familiar because people know Google and they, you know, a, lot, a lot of folks have Android. Um, so they, they've done their due diligence and keeping up technically and, of course, and in maintaining their partnerships. So it's kept them from becoming a silo themselves. Okay. So just to drill down a little bit further uh, and to speak about, uh, you know, when you're looking at a, a solution suite, right, um, and, you, you know, the big word being unified, right, um, you're looking for a platform that is able to handle um, all the different types of devices, such as the Apple ecosystem, right? So clearly they have iOS, they have iPad OS, which is going to deliver um, shared iPad and uh, things that bring you closer to uh, Mac OS, you know, of course, but on a, uh, on a mobile device, uh, you're going to be getting into Android, um, which, you know, 
Google's been working at a feverish pace, uh, you know, to mature that and, and make that the best it can be with the introduction of Android Enterprise. So we went from Android for work to now Android Enterprise, and um, they've done a great job with that. I'm, I'm very proud of Google and the team, and that's something that, uh, that again, um, Workspace ONE fully supports. And, uh, of course, Samsung Knox as well right there alongside it. Um, really rich integration there. Um, getting into Windows again, like I alluded to, uh, there's there's a lot of complexities that come with Windows 10, from um, out of the box enrollment experience, um, autopilot, uh, MDM and Azure AD joining, and of course patching and software distribution. So there's uh, a lot of support that they put uh, put in for Windows 10 and Windows 11 now. Um, with that. Again, Mac OS, uh, again, being a fully featured uh, uh, endpoint desktop operating system, um, have, a, have a rich experience there in managing those and, um, and providing all the things that you've come to expect from, uh, from Apple and, and Mac OS. And, of course, the MDM of your choice here being uh, Workspace ONE, managing all that. And again, Chrome OS, like I, like I was speaking to. So, again, there's, there's some great... Uh, integration points there and, and utilizing um, Chrome OS devices uh, in the enterprise or your or your education uh, educational arena. And lastly, again, like, like I say, they, they have a lot of opportunities to, to manage things that sit outside of all those, those five categories at top. And um, like I said, they're really bringing a unified single pane of glass solution to that that, uh, that you can use to, to drive that forward. So this kind of further alludes and breaks down a little bit of Workspace ONE. And when you, when you look at a single solution, sometimes it's amazing to, to see how much is actually going on um, inside that, you know, to keep them uh, at the, the top of their game and, uh, you know, and making them a front runner. You, um, like I say, you'll, you'll see that when, it, when it's broken down, um, you know, they're really looking to drive the modernization of IT. Um, and that's that's all done by delivering a rich solution, right? Being able to make it as easy on the administrator as it is the user. Um, and so the administrator being able to come to management and say, hey, look, I have a solution that manages all of our devices. Uh, I can give you analytics um, and, and you know, provide information about our, our workforce and, and the trends that are driving what it is that we're doing. Um, uh, with, with our folks that are out in the field. Um, we have the ability to support them uh, from a you know, remote control perspective. Right? That's one that, um, that was, has been incorporated to the system for a while, and it's extremely useful uh, to be able to have that ability to, to reach out and see the screen of a colleague and, uh, and be able to help them through the issue that they're working on. Um, and again, you know, the other things that sometimes people don't think about are these systems, you know, it's the life cycle uh, of the machine, right? Um, being able to uh, to self-service and request applications, um, being able to, to have the productivity pieces that you need to, to help you do your work, such as uh, old, old systems that you have on-premise where you, you may need a connection or a VPN to get to those. Um, you know, that Workspace ONE, again, working to consider all these uh, situations that, uh, that exist in any given workspace and, uh, and have a solution for that. And then lastly, of course, getting into security, right? Um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of emphasis right now on zero trust and, and device trust. Um, and so, you know, while they are a device management system, they have integrations and abilities to, to work with. Octas and, and Azure ADs and ping identities um, to say, yes, we have trusted devices, you have sign-ins, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the two can talk to each other and uh, make it a, a best-of-breed experience there. So, All right, so moving forward here just a little bit, we have a nice pretty slide for you <laughs> yeah, with uh, Talking about you know how this all works, um, getting into the the bigger picture, right? So every company wants to become uh, larger, or every company is acquiring um, 
every company it goes through divestments, right? So we want to look at if I if I buy a solution and um, I I grow, right, or I change. Um, want to make sure I can continue to get the the return on the investment that I that I'm looking for uh, when those things happen. All right. So getting into the the big picture here. Um, you know, again, I, I maybe I make an acquisition and I pick up someone in EMEA, right? Um, or I chart, I start a, a sub, sub branch of my company in, in a different region. Um, you know, when, when you look at Workspace One, you've got the ability to, to build that out and to have basically systems within systems. So if I'm an administrator in the United States, I only need to deal with devices that are within uh, my regions and, um, you know, keep that separate. Um, if I'm someone, again, who is working in the, you know, uh, administering you know, devices for frontline workers, things of that nature, um, but it's allowing you, it gives you a nice hierarchy to be able to um, tailor that experience for people and, and again, those different functions. Um, and even getting into where I have different types of devices. So if I get a great deal on, on uh Chromebooks, and I, and I want to you know pr- pr- you know push those out, but I want to do it in a way that's different from all my other devices. I can go in and create a a, a specific section there, and um, and again have that to uh, to be split up and administered separately, and uh, and operate on its own without interfering with the other types of devices. So, all right. So when we talk about you know the transformation, right? Um, we're looking again to get away from siloed tools. That's again, that's kind of become the bane uh, for us. Is um, we we acquired a company and it had one MDM, um, or we um, you know had got a deal on a, on a certain set of devices and it included a, a device management system. Um, so we want to kind of look at all these uh, things and, and how it is that. We could, you know, could man- administer and manage them all from from one point, and so um, this speaks basically to you know that we have uh, a system here that is able to to do this comprehensively, and and for a lot of folks, like I say, it's it's not necessarily something you can put uh, a dollar figure on. Um, you just know that you have a lot of time and effort being spent. Um, out there on on all these things um, and these individual systems, and so that's one some, one thing that really, like I say, is is driving us forward with the Workspace One um, suite of of products here. So when we talk about if we have different systems or if we have different types of devices that we want to manage, we will we look at user experience right you know we, we can get the devices in we've got the system that's a a hub with spokes uh, and that's exactly the visual that uh the vmware is looking to present to that they have a hub and it is able to accommodate uh devices and employees from from all areas of the globe and you know different types of platforms so if we come down and look they uh they utilize a a visual for that which is a hub all right, so um, what they've really worked to do is, is bring a unified uh, approach to this and provide a, a Workspace ONE Hub app. And so on all the devices that you're working with, you'll see that they have that as the front runner for um, all things Workspace ONE. And so that'll, that'll actually you know, be your wizard and your guide and your point uh, with, with the solution. Uh, to where you look for that, uh, regardless of what device you're on, and say, yep, that's my go-to. Uh, this has my list of applications. This can tell me about the devices I have enrolled. This can tell me, um, you know, the, the health state or the compliance of my device um, and just act as a, a centralized point. So they've done a really good job there and, um, and, and like I say, unifying that and um, making that their, their front runner for, for all things Workspace ONE. So, speaking of all the endpoints, uh, and, I, and I hit on this earlier, um, you have the the zero trust uh, model coming up, and um, like I say, Workspace One UEM 
uh, does act as a device management system. So it has uh, the ability to drive all the things that you see on your screen. Um, and so that being said, uh, if, if I have Android devices that need to be uh, monitored to make sure they're not jailbroken, um, if I need to ensure complex passcodes or I want to ensure uh, touch ID, face ID are being used, um, these are all things that fall under the umbrella of, of Workspace ONE UEM and, and the suite that, it, uh, that it's incorporated into. So um, they've, they've done an excellent job here of, again, making sure that you're covered on all your endpoints. Um, and then, of course, again, being able to, to speak to the other components that you may have already uh, running in place. So, again, your, your Azure um, working as a, uh, uh, a trusted partner is what they call them, uh, but essentially being able to, to delegate uh, over to Workspace ONE from Azure and say, hey, is this device trusted? Is it someone I should let access uh, Office 365 or one of, one of my apps that are, are federated with Azure? So, um, they, like I say, they, they work hand in hand uh, to, to ensure that um, they're doing what they can from an a endpoint management solution to, uh, to provide that intel over to uh, other systems. Okay, so the second part to the solution, uh, and, I, and, I, and I spoke on this lightly earlier, is that if you've got a, um, if you've got services and solutions that are still on premise, that are still running in a data center that you administer, um, they've always had a, an excellent solution um, with their tunnel product to be able to to get you access. So we still have customers who are accessing file shares. You know, they um, they they will. Uh, need to access websites that are still hosted internally on IA servers or Apache servers, and uh, like I say, you know that this is a, a solution that works across the board for all the endpoints from you know Windows, Mac OS, uh, Android, iOS. Um, they can get you access to those, so it's it's a nice solution that integrates tightly uh, with Workspace One, dating all the way back uh, to AirWatch actually. So they've done a, a great job of keeping that alive and. Um, like say, providing that if you're looking to you know, to get away from your traditional, uh, more expensive VPN concentrators. So, and, you know, alluding a little bit more to, or getting a little bit more deeper into the integration with Office 365. Um, like I say, they, from an integration perspective, anybody you know who is playing outside of Microsoft, basically, they, they have to find all the best ways to, to make their product integrate. And so uh, when you look at the, the entire um, you know, experience from a Microsoft device or Office 365 or Azure, um, you're looking for a solution that has, has all those boxes checked. And so... Um, Again, Workspace ONE being able to handle the entire life cycle, excuse me, life cycle of a Windows device and Azure and Office 365 being able to, you know, to take care of onboarding and be able to take care of um, validating device trust and um, single sign-on. Like I say, but they, they've checked all the boxes and, and are really working uh, to even, even though they aren't a Microsoft product, they are behaving um, as best they can to, uh, to be one. And so when you look at, you know, Intune and uh, Endpoint Manager, you know, those are things that Microsoft provides as part of the, um, the licensing that, that you can have with them. But, um, I think you'll you'll also see that you know due to the the time in the industry, um, VMware ha has has greatly built out their offering, and um, they like to say they have as many offerings in there, if not more, than what you would see in Intune and Endpoint Manager. So it's it's important to keep that in mind when making your decision. So. Uh, you know, so this here, again, just speaks a little bit more to, uh, you know, to what it is that you have going on um, as, as a whole with the employee experience, right? Um, so you want to be able to have that visibility into to how things are going in terms of uh, the dashboards that are provided 
in terms of being able to remote control, um, you know, generate reports, but you have a pretty good understanding of how things are looking uh, from a user and user experience perspective. Um, of course, you want to have to, you know, be able to be predictive and proactive. Um, if you've got devices that are falling out of scope that are, you know, are getting older, you have the ability to report um, and to, to start to, to order, you know, to, uh, to kick in attrition a little bit and uh, to flush out some of the older devices. Um, you know, it, it, it enhanced logging and troubleshooting, which is a big component that you're going to need. Um, there's plenty of that to be had inside Workspace ONE. Um, and, you know, you can also just follow some of the, the industry insights that you're seeing out there um, from the, the tools and, and portals that, uh, that VMware provides. So we have the, the solution or <laughs> the solution you're using, uh, the, the visuals and feedback you need, troubleshooting, and then the ability to obtain insights and whatnot as well as part of that. So, okay. So this slide goes from small to really big really fast. And, you know, the, the point to drive home here, and, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, is that uh, VMware has always been, you know, considered themselves to be an independent software vendor, right? Or actually it's AirWatch and now VMware. So they understand the importance of, you know, just if they're by themselves, right, they're just, just another device management solution. Uh, but when you start to look at the network that they've built um, on, on the trust network side and on the integration side, right, they have a lot of great integrations with a lot of the services um, that we're currently probably using right at this very exact second. Um, and it's, it's very important, you know, when you look at that um, because it shows that they are looking to incorporate as much value into their product, uh, but also other products as well, um, and, and trying to be a, a team player and, um, and like I say, find the, the best integration and, and partnering opportunities that are out there. So, okay. Bring it home here. Uh, if you're just joining us um, and, and you want the, the recap real quick on, uh, on why should I go with Workspace ONE, right? Um, because it, it's a unified endpoint management system, and, and it, you know, the, you'll see that advertised a lot. And a lot of people have picked up MDM in the early days. A lot of people got on the uh, enterprise management, and now, of course, we're, we just keep expanding, and now we're into unified endpoint management. Um, and there are only uh, one or two systems out there that are qualified to do this really well. And, uh, and so VMware Workspace ONE uh, has just has kept bolting on spokes to their hub. And um, so they've, they've got the depth and the broadest ecosystem support, like hands down. Um, the unified cloud first management and security. Again, everything they have now is available as a SaaS solution. So you can get to this from wherever you are um, and ensure that you're able to, to take care of your devices and, and tasks that need your attention. Um, and they've also got this, of course, in a MSP model. So you can do your own dedicated tenant. You can have a managed service provider provide that to you um, as part of theirs. And they have lots of great options to choose from. Um, Eric, I know, yeah. uh, you know mm -hmm. we were talking about, you know, all the things that uh, Workspace ONE can do. Um, but, I mean, have you seen, obviously, you work, you know, you work across all sorts of, you know, UEM, MDMs, and, you know, you've done installs for Workspace ONE. Have you, do you have any, anything that comes to mind, any stories where maybe a customer goes like, you know, dang, I can't believe I didn't have this earlier? Or, you know, we, we talk about these things. It's one thing to kind of conceptualize them, but actually, you know, boots on the ground, you know, what have you seen? Yeah, so we, we honestly come across this a lot and, and folks that you either had a solution early on, right, or they set it up and they just let it bake, right? And so um, what, what you see is you have a combination of, you know, things evolving and the actual management space. So, the, again, you know, if I'm looking at Workspace ONE or something like that, like, wow, they bolted on all these things and they have all these offerings, you know, to be um, truly uh have, have the broadest offering available. But the part two to that is, is that you have Google, you have Apple, you have Microsoft, right? Um, they are all out there expanding their offerings as well. So it's, you, you have both of those, right, that, that people hear about and like, wow, that's cool. Okay. 
Um, but the, the big component is, is is bringing someone in who can tie all of it together, right? And so um, so they get the wow factor, you know, and like, oh, that'd be cool. I'd love to do share, you know, shared iPad. We have a bunch of them sitting around. Okay, but like how? Because when I last used iPad, you know, the last time we were provisioning them, um, you know, none of those things were turned on. So, um, but but you know, ultimately, as a as a, an integrator, right, um, having a system like Workspace One where they've considered all those things and they have kept up with the other vendors, that's kind of what we're all like the you know the the light bulbs really start to go off. Is okay, a we have a, a solution here that that embraces all these things. They've seen what's coming on the horizon and they've incorporated those. Um, and then B, of course, um, you know, we have someone to, to help us bring it all, all together. So, but, um, but yeah, there's like say folks that are moving from existing systems, old, you know, legacy systems where they didn't use any of, you know, like I'll say volume purchase plan, right? Um, they, maybe they didn't use, I, I, I still get this. Uh, I, I'd love to do it, but I don't want to wipe the devices because I'm worried that they're going to brick, right? Um, maybe they didn't use, um, they didn't use Apple Business Manager, or right? they didn't use um, Google uh, Zero Zero Touch, right? And so, you know, to come back and, and to help explain all that to them and say, okay, yes, because they came through that, um, you know, users can you can make it a company-owned, personally enabled device. They can put their personal Apple ID on there. Um, but either way, you know, at the end of the day, when you wipe that device, it's still tied to you. It's still your asset. So it's, like I say, just clarifying sometimes and helping out uh, throughout the whole journey. But um, yeah, there's <laughs> always an eye, eye opener, too, on, on engagements like that. So, um, But, yeah, so like I say, uh, again, why I choose Endpoint Manager, all those reasons, um, again, they're just comprehensive, right? I've always appreciated the fact that uh, they're, they're always keeping up with industry trends and, and the latest uh, pieces, and again, they're working to integrate, um, and, and working as an industry leader to to really move the needle there um, in that regard. So, and and, okay. you, and you see it all. You know, you don't just work with VMware as well. I mean, you, you've you know, your your background goes uh, across you know all all fields. So, you know, I, I, <laughs> right, yeah, definitely trust. Definitely yes. trust your opinion. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, there's I like I, I like change. I'm a, I'm a big and. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I embrace change. I love it. So, um, and like I say, they've always done well. The others, you know, they, they keep up with each other and keep themselves honest. Um, but as a whole, it, uh, it's always been a pleasure to deal with the workspace one suite. So, all right. Uh, so lastly, um, we're at the end of our formal presentation here. So if, uh, you know, if you've seen something here, I see a question or two on the Q and a, which is awesome. Um, we've got plenty of resources that uh, will allow us to, to help you. Uh, there is an actual test drive arena that we have that we can set you up in to, uh, to actually get in and kick the tires and see everything running live. And without that, uh, I think I will turn it over to Max. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move into a demo now. Eric, if you want to go ahead and, uh, and get us going on that, show us uh, what we're missing. Absolutely. Give me. Just a moment here. All right. It's coming over to the Workspace ONE UEM interface here. Uh, li like I mentioned, the Workspace ONE solution is, is comprehensive. So it has the ability to, to do lots of things, manage lots of devices. Of course, you know, if you're looking at it from a uh, administrator perspective, you're going to want to have to find a you know find a way to make sense of it all, right? So this uh, this dashboard that we see as we first sign in is what helps a lot with that. Um, so you can see you know how many devices you're managing. So if you're if you're trying to be uh, savvy on your license usage, you know exactly how many devices that are are being uh, actively managed. You can see a good breakdown of you know ones that you own versus ones that are employee owned. Uh, ones that maybe are shared devices, um, and if you've kind of, you know, had a couple slide in there that uh, you haven't kept track of, those will come up as undefined, but those can always be kind of be rectified. So, um, I also have your security panel here, which will kind of give you an idea of, of mostly where, where no, no passcodes are set or uh, 
encryption is not turned on because there's no passcode set. So those two numbers will always be very close to each other. Occasionally, you'll have a compromised device. Um, this is run a little bit high, so we should probably check on that. Um, if you've got devices, you know, that aren't checking in, that can always help you free up your license count. So if you haven't heard from a device in 60 or 90 days, um, maybe they've upgraded, maybe they've lost it, uh, but that can always help you clear out things. Um, and again, looking at devices that maybe haven't been in in, in you know, 31 days or longer, and there's a lot of those. Uh, so you might want to check into that. Uh, but it also lets you know your, your platforms, right? So as we, managed, as we mentioned, you can manage uh, quite a litany of, of different types of devices. So you can see um, where you're getting the most value, uh, bang for your buck, in terms of uh, types of devices that you're managing. And it, it just goes on and on down here. I won't spend too much time on this, but... Um, if you're looking at, uh, you know, a couple devices that are maybe testing out the iOS version 16, which is obviously not out yet, but um, you can see if you need to, uh, you know, do current minus two. So if you've got devices that are running uh, less than iOS 13 or Android uh, 10 or, or lower, you can go in and work to retire those or, you know, send a communication that would say um, we're no longer going to support these because they're, their end of life and things like that. So, um, but you know, you start there. Uh, you can work your way into the the view again, seeing uh, all the different types of devices and when they're checking in, um, which is great. Um, a, a lot of our questions come from, okay, uh, how how do I manage? Right, like we talked about, if if I grow, if my company gets bigger, it's great that I have this list of three thousand two hundred or three thousand. 328 devices, um, but I need to find a way to to carve these up and to maybe uh, put them into some different containers for management or delegate. Um, you have this ability here to come in and say, okay, um, we, we now have a new group under engineering, um, and they are going to be uh, you know, architects or developers. Um, we're going to, to shift and just have a couple devices that are are in there, right? Um, and that's uh, get a, a kind of gives you a visual on the hierarchy and as to how that can be built out um, top down. We also have people ask, um, you know, I need to to set up all my applications to give out. So um, if I've got this list here that I see, we now see these are some of our internal Windows applications that we are giving out, 7-Zip and Adobe Reader and things like that. Um, if we look at things that we're bringing in maybe from the public stores, right, from the Google Play, from the Apple Store, uh, from the Microsoft Store for business, um, those get brought in, and you can see that they're they're all categorized here. Even though they're on one list, they're um, categorized, categorized woo, um, and then purchased. So these are things that you have bought from Apple. Um, and uh, if you have a token that expires for your VPP, um, you will get this message here, and you won't see an update of your apps. So uh, we like to incorporate a couple error messages here and there into our demos. So, um, so but like I say, you can go, okay, we have this uh, this app that we brought in from the Apple iOS store, um, and we want to uh, to be able to go and, and give it out um, to someone, or we want to distribute, you know, our internal 7-zip application. Um, you can get in and, and hop into look at these and um, how they should be distributed and sent out to to what group. And then, of course, you get all the breakdowns and dashboards in here as well. So, it, um, like I said, they've done a great job of making sure you're having everything you need to get the apps out, to, to set them up, to make sure if, if they can um, auto-install and set up, you know, the licensing key and um, different parameters that you need. Um, like I said, there's a lot of that, that that can be squared away from here. So um, lastly, uh, you know, getting into uh, account management, right? So if I've, I'm, I'm a company and um, I, I buy into Workspace ONE, um, I am going to be getting my users from Active Directory or I'm going to maybe be getting my users from, from Azure or from Okta um, because companies tend to buy different softwares for, for these things. It's not always uh, one for one size fits all. Um, and so that said, you know, you will have a list of, of users that, that come in. And um, 
you know, these can be synchronized and, uh, of course, you can entitle them to, to different types of applications based on their roles or you can, you can make applications available to, you know, all these types of devices. Um, but either way, like I say, you have a, a list of users here. You have your administrators, of course, that you would keep separate for, for the different administration roles inside um, the different locations inside Workspace ONE. Uh, but but the bigger part is is um, as we grow and as we get away from Active Directory, um, there's a, a piece that is provided with this, and that's called uh, the uh, VMware Access. So you have essentially a landing page um, that is set up and has access to all of your web-based apps, right? So and they, they also incorporate. VMware Horizon, so if you have virtual desktops, um, you will see those in there. So it's very similar to what you would see with Okta or um, or Azure, right, uh, where you have a landing page with uh, cheeklets or tiles, and you need a centralized point um, from all your devices that you're managing to be able to get to those. Um, and, and some of these will be shortcuts, you know, they'll, they'll go out uh, to, to Okta or they'll go out to Azure um, or they'll take you directly out to the American Express, you know, link themselves. Um, it just depends on how it's all uh, arranged and how your um, applications are set up within the company. But this has become their middleman. So you have, the, you know, I have devices I need to manage, but I also have applications and sign-ins and things like that out in, on the internet and I need a, a service that sits between and glues it all together and that's kind of what the uh, the VMware one or workspace one access um, has evolved into so extremely useful to have um, and sets up for a, a great user experience um, if, if, if you'd like to use this as your um, dashboard, so to speak, for people to access when they're trying to get to all their things. So, um, so that is, like I say, that's kind of the uh, the workspace one UEM side of the house. Um, again, you uh, you see access here. We can also go in and do an actual um, a Horizon session here, right? So this is uh, taking us straight from our dashboard. It's now going to show me my virtual desktop session. And like I say, they've got this positioned to where it will actually take us straight in, which the the, the value of the VMware um, environment is that they have all these things and they're they're tightly integrated, um, like you see here. So that said, um, devices, management, apps, users, uh, the services that you need from VMware to glue it all together. Um, if you're starting out small and want to add on, like I said, they have all the things, all the facets needed to uh, to bring all these things together and uh, support you on your journey uh, into modern technology and, and desktops and endpoints. So without further ado, Max, I think that's a good demo for you guys. And if you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, definitely. Eric, thanks so much for demoing that. Yeah, I see the uh, you know, first question I see in the chat. Um, you know, you mentioned end-to-end uh, -end security. Um, how can Workspace ONE secure corporate data access from a personal device? Yeah, so if you are someone who is bringing your personal device into Workspace ONE, uh, there's, there's going to be a couple ways that that could happen. Um, in general, you're adding, you're being asked to add your, you know, your device into the system. Um, most of the operating systems, you know, Android and, and Apple, um, they are putting your work into like a work profile, right? So they are essentially splitting your device into two personas and they are giving you uh, the ability to have work apps um, and things that you need to do your job. But they're, they're like I say, they're essentially, it's kind of like a you know Windows device where it's user A and user B. Um, and so you'll see your work and you'll see personal. Um, and of course that whole side of the house is managed by Workspace ONE. So um, that said, you get all the benefits of having work on your device, 
uh, but at the same time, you don't have to worry about your personal device being wiped and things of that nature, right? It's just retired and released, and then that, uh, that work side of the house would cease to exist, uh, be removed uh, seamlessly. So, sure. um, yeah, so that's, that's the start of that. <laughs> It's uh, one more question. How would I mm -hmm. supply a Windows system for a new hire? Yeah, so Windows actually is going to, you know, they follow the model, or you could say they set the model and everyone else followed. Um, but they uh, have it set to where you, you use autopilot. And so your integrators can take the devices that, uh, that you're ordering from them, or you can do it yourself, um, and you can add those into a autopilot profile. Um, and so, you know, if, if you're using Workspace One, um, Windows has an entry that says, okay, where should I send this device to, right? So if you're using, uh, you know, again, Workspace One, it's, it's going to see this entry and it's going to say, yep, go, uh, go start the out-of-box enrollment wizard, and uh, I want you to enroll and sign in um, using Workspace One. And so it essentially is acting as, as point there and, and quarterbacking um, all of the, the, the startup pieces. And at that point, the device provisions, it gets its applications, and then it emerges um, into the user profile, right, or the, the sign-in. Um, and from there, depending on your setup, of course, if you're still active directory, you could sign in as other users. Uh, if you're someone who is uh, embracing, you know, all things modern, you'd be in Azure Active Directory, You'd be at your home on your Wi-Fi, um, you know, using all the things that were pushed to you right, right there out the gate. So, um, like I said, they're all kind of following each other in, in that regard. And let's pretend everybody is not anywhere near a physical office, and let's make it as easy as possible. So, cool. Um, last question I'm seeing here. Uh, it, the question is: You guys mentioned uh, remote access. In case of emergency, would Workspace One be able to perform a remote device wipe, and how would that work? Yeah, so the the way that the relationship is built is that Workspace ONE and all uh, device management systems regarding iOS and Apple, um, they have essentially a hook into the management channel. So they, you know, when you enroll an Apple device or you enroll an Android device, they there's a relationship there. Um, and it says, okay, I'm going to send out this command, and then the command's going to get sent to the device from Apple or Google, right? So uh, as long as the device is on a network somewhere, um, you, can, you can issue that, right? So whether it be on a cellular network, whether it be on the Wi-Fi somewhere, as long as it can check in with, its, you know, with the back end, um, it can receive that command. Um, there are ways to also, like, you know, I've had people go, well, that's great, but what happens if the device, you know, ends up in the back of a, a taxi and it doesn't get picked up for two months because it's, you know, it's dark and it was under the seat and they didn't see it, whatever the case, right? And then two months later it emerges, comes back online. Um, if it if the cellular plan it was on, it was canceled, you know, or switched to a different sim, well, it's not going to be able to talk anymore. If the cab doesn't have Wi-Fi, you know, whatever the case, the, the device is basically a, a, a brick at that point, right? Um, you do have solutions out there that can actually uh, delete all the data that's on the device after X amount of days, right? Like, so it's like a self-destruct plan. Um, it doesn't wipe the device, but it just says, okay, if there was any company data that's in here, I want you to just erase it after I, you haven't checked in with me in so many days. Um, of course, anybody that finds a device at this point, they're probably going to try to power it on, fat finger the passcode 10 times, you know, or whatever you have it set to, and it's going to wipe. And, and when it does, it's going to come back to your, uh, your MDM, right, or your device manager, which would be Workspace ONE. And at that point, they're going to see that it, it belongs to a company from the landing page, and they're going to hopefully send it back because they realize it's a, it's a brick at that point. So, Yeah. Long answer to a short question. Sorry. Okay. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, I think that concludes all the questions we had. Uh, Eric, any closing statements from you? No, I appreciate you so much for having me today. I hope it's been beneficial for everyone. I haven't talked to you all too much. There's, Like I said, there's so many scenarios at this point, right? So please reach out to us. Um, if you'd like to set up a consultation, we'd be more than happy to uh, to talk through your scenarios that you have going and uh, help, make, help make things just a little bit less crazy. So appreciate your time today.
Awesome. Yeah. If you guys want to connect with uh, Eric or I on LinkedIn, uh, feel free to uh, search us on there. Uh, we're with EBF. So do that. Um, like Eric said, if you want a consultation or anything, uh, reach out. We can set that up as well. Uh, thank you everyone so much for joining the VMware Digital Workspace Workshop. Uh, thanks for your time. And thanks for listening. Have a good one.